hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen to this or watch this video when you can safely close your eyes. I say video because I, I make a podcast and I also put them on YouTube as well. Please subscribe and if you like what I do, please go to my website, leave a review. And if you'd like to support this free service, the running costs, which are quite hefty at times because I've got quite a few podcasts, website and all that stuff. If you'd like to help me with those running costs, uh, please go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. The, the link is on my website as well. Now, I'm going to talk about I'm going to talk about the birds inside. The birds. In, I've got birds in the cavities of my walls, sort of, kind of where the uh, it's kind of the loft wall partition bit. I just started making lots of noise as I was talking. I got distracted me. And now I've got gas, brilliant. So, I'm going to talk about gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to be all fakey with it. So, I'm not going to sort of, I don't know, sometimes I feel that, you know, if I read... I've read books and stuff, and it's it's almost uh, there's that preachy gratitude, almost um, kind of trying to put you on a guilt trip. You should feel grateful for what you got because there's people starving in other countries, so you should eat all that slop that I've just given you. It's like, well, I would eat it if it tasted nice, but it tastes horrible. You know, I think once I said, well. Why don't you send it to them then? And I got in trouble for that. I was only, I was only, I was only thirty-two, so it, it's kind of that guilt trip. You should feel grateful, and you can't force someone to feel grateful, and you can't force yourself to feel grateful. It's, it's, it has to be natural, organic. It can be encouraged, it can be, you know, kind of manifested, I suppose, via the way we think, positivity, lifestyle. But I'm not going to focus on any of that stuff. What I want to focus on is, what are you actually grateful for? Like really grateful for and I don't mean grateful as in oh I can't move I'm in so much gratitude I'm completely engulfed in gratitude and I don't mean um, <laughs> I don't mean that kind of um, extreme gratitude I'm just sort of just generally what are you grateful for you know of course if someone's just given you one of their kidneys to save your life that's a level of gratitude that I can't even imagine. You know, that's it gives me tingles just thinking about it. The idea of someone doing something like that. But it's very unlikely that the majority of people have had anything like that. You know, that kind of extreme situation. However, lots and lots of people have been helped whether it's by the police by the ambulance by you know even times that we're not going to be aware of you think how many times when you was a kid well I'll talk about myself how many times when I was a kid that I would have got hurt if it wasn't for my dad 
sort of grabbing me and stopping me from running into the fire. As I said, I didn't like my mum's cooking, but I just it just kept it grabbed me. You know, it it's, it stopped me once we was in the car. This was the seventies, early eighties. Did not have to wear seatbelts. No one was, you know, it was just it was. In fact, I wasn't even sure what the seatbelt was there for. And we was in a van with my dad. Someone pulled out in front of the car or the van. My dad stopped. And he put his big massive arms and stopped all three of me and my two brothers from going through the windscreen. Now you could say, well, that's his job. He's supposed to do that. It doesn't matter what people are supposed to do. It's what they do do, isn't it? Not what they're supposed to do. It's one of those things, you know, people say, I've been out with people in restaurants and this, oh, I said, that was good service. Oh, she was really friendly, or he was really friendly, and um, that's what they're getting paid for, I hear. Yeah, but they don't have to actually do a good job just because they're getting paid. I think the uh, all of us have had plenty of experiences of seeing people doing a really rubbish job you know, doing a really bad or not caring about what they're doing or giving no interest in their job. And I've been in that position many times where I didn't care about my job. Luckily, I was never a surgeon. You know, so I didn't have any responsible positions. But you know, if I get, if I get treated well by someone... Or if a, a bus driver is friendly, I feel grateful for that. It's quite nice. Or someone opens a door for me, or leave, you know, leaves a, pushes a door open in the garage so I can get in. Not that I need physical help to get into the garage, but it's something quite nice, and I feel grateful in that moment. But realistically, I'm not going to lay in bed thinking about that, thinking, oh, and trying to get in touch with my gratitude by thinking about someone to open the door for me. I won't be putting it into my grat- gratitudinal journal because it's almost insignificant. But is it? Is it insignificant? Because it kind of flips it on its side about, you know, the people that we've helped. You turn it upside down. We've helped people without realising it. Well, that person you open the door for, or that person maybe you're friendly to in the restaurant, and you give them a good service, or the waiter or waitress that you're friendly to, you know, however it works, you know, whichever way direction you want to go, they may be at their last, you know, holding literally their last straw, as the old saying goes. You know, they're, they're kind of at their wits end, whatever expression you want to use. And one thing, maybe the thing that pushes them over the edge. And I'm not talking about something dramatic, but it could be something like they might be rude to their boss and get sacked, which is very dramatic financially to them. Or they may go to the pub and drink and they might, they might have an alcohol problem and they haven't had a drink for six years. But it's just... Now, being rude to them is not... It's, you're not responsible for what they do. But being kind to them... You've had an effect because... 
they might actually come away from that interaction feeling that I don't know almost regenerated you know it's like whew, you know kind of getting back back to the level that they needed to be and the amount of times I've heard people say not to me by the way just about someone else or about a situation that uh, you've what's what is the right word you've I don't know what it is, but it's something about you've you've given me trust in humans again, in human kindness. Almost like they'd given up on people and they just expected the worst out of everyone. And then somebody's kind to them and helps them and they feel rejuvenated and they start to think differently or think the way they used to think that people generally are kind. You know, I think the reason why we notice, why it's, it's very, it seems to be quite, in my country anyway, and I've not done a survey with every single person, but there is a lot of negativity in this country, and I'll be brought up in a negative country. It's generally quite negative. It doesn't mean that everybody's negative, and even negative people aren't negative all the time. No one's anything all the time, are we? But I just think... It can be hard to get out of that if that's how you've been raised in that society. It's a very strange thing, isn't it? The whole feeling grateful for stuff. Realising that... Or maybe you can feel grateful to yourself. If you can't feel grateful, or maybe you can't get in touch with gratitude towards other people, for whatever reason, at this moment, and I'm not going to ask you to get into, in touch with any gratitude. I'm just talking about it. It is up to you. It's like washing. Having a bath, having a shower, eating, going to the toilet. It's up to you. It's, that's your responsibility. You, 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 know, you can do that. You can choose to have a bath or you can choose to have a shower. You can choose to feel grateful now you can choose to ponder on it, you know, after the recording's finished. It's up to you. I've got no control over what you do or say or think. However, I think it's useful to get in touch with reality. The one thing that maybe none of us really like too much especially at certain times reality is not always brilliant but the reality is that there's very likely well there is something for all of us to be grateful for even somebody that's very very ill very poorly, suffering, and everyone's suffering in some way uh, at certain levels. Everybody, if, they, if they're not suffering with bereavement now, they will do. Everybody, ha everyone loses somebody. somebody. Some people lose people when they're young, like grandparents, parents, sisters, brothers, you know. But everybody loses, so everyone goes through that process. And everybody also has been helped by other people. Everybody's got something to be grateful for. I mean, you could break it down to the bare bones, couldn't you? As simple as, well, I'm grateful that I can walk. A lot of people can't walk. 
Uh, I'm grateful I can talk. If I couldn't talk, I wouldn't be able to make these recordings. Some of you listening may think, oh, pity, pity, pity you can talk because you make these recordings. But that's fine. <laughs> Why are you listening then? So there's things that we can be grateful for. Even something simple as maybe having had a bad stomach and then now you haven't got that anymore. You know, might have had a bit of an upset stomach for a couple of days and now it's all back to normal. And I think maybe instead of having that big, huge, gushy um, gratitude feeling, you know, which maybe is almost expected with some of these uh, recordings or books on gratitude. So instead of having that overwhelming, ooh, tingly yoga spiritual breakthrough of gratitude, which I'm sure does happen with people, how, you know, why not just let the tap drip? Let the gratitude just drip in constantly. 24 hours a day just let those feelings through so someone does something nice perhaps notice it and let that feeling just ah oh, that was nice because in that moment someone with physical pain they're not feeling their pain in that moment they can argue all they like, but in that second, it might only last a second or two seconds, they're outwardly focused and they're feeling, I'm not talking about someone opening a door for them because that might not quite do it. Um, some people get angry if you open the door for them, especially if they don't want to go out. But if you've got, you do something nice to somebody then they're going to have a feeling, some kind of feeling. So even if it's, even if it's an angry feeling, you know, why did you open the door for me? I'm a human being, I'm equal to you. I don't need to be man-splained. I don't need to be, you know, it could be someone or it could be a man, you know. I don't need you to open the door for me, 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 me. Which is fine. It's like, okay. And in my, in my experience, both of the people involved in that interaction leave with an angry feeling. It's not a nice experience for either, I don't think. Unless, of course, they get off on uh, causing distress to people. But even in that moment, they've been distracted from their own problems. Emotional, physical pain is replaced with that interaction in that moment. And they might still be talking about it six hours later. Can't believe this person, he opened the door for me. I mean, what, what is, does it look like? I can't even open the door myself. <laughs> I haven't actually had this experience, but I know people that have. I've seen it. It's quite a, kind of funny in some ways. But uh, I've also had people just close the door on me. Admittedly, I didn't live in their home, so I suppose, you know, go away or I'll call the police. Oh, I just want a cup of tea. So that tap of gratitude can continue to drip. I quite like that idea. Just like I like the idea of there being a hole in the bucket of stress. So it doesn't have to all pour out all at the same time. So having, you know, relieving stress, gaining relaxation, increase your feeling of gratitude, 
doesn't have to be a big surge of energy. It can be, and it, and some people I think, and me included, sometimes in the past I've thought, it has to be that, otherwise it's not working. Got to have this big instant surge of, uh, you know, instant feeling. And as my doctor said to me, when I said that to him years ago, about the antidepressants, I want something that gives me a boost and gets rid of the anxiety or gets rid of the stress, gives me a, a, a feeling of well-being instantly. I don't want to be taking this medication every day for years and years. And he said, well, you could smoke crack. I said, what? He said, yeah, the only way you're going to get that kind of feeling is by illegal street drugs. We don't offer that in the medical health service because it's not healthy for you. And then I start thinking, oh, okay. So the idea is it's drip, 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 drip. And that's what antidepressants are, drip, drip, drip. You're not getting a whole month's worth of um, Prozac in one sitting because I'm, I'm guessing that would be extremely harmful and it, um, obviously it could kill you couldn't it if you took the tablets like that but you wouldn't get that feeling because there wouldn't be a feeling of well-being if you got the feeling of a month's worth of um, antidepressants you'd possibly be stuck to the ceiling <laughs> because you'd be just off out of your mind like high as a kite possibly I don't know so that's why they just drip, 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 drip. So maybe we could have that with the, this is just an idea. I mean, I offer the ideas, your unconscious mind absorbs what it wants to absorb. Consciously you think about it. And what you consciously think about affects what your unconscious mind gives you. So, what you think about is what you get. And I know some people like to sort of make fun of that statement, you know, sort of, well, in that case, I'm thinking about a million dollars. No, it's not really how it works. It's a case of, when we say what you think about, what you get is, if someone's constantly thinking about crappiness, and how rubbish their life is in their perception. And they st keep thinking about all the bad things that have ever happened and they expect bad things to happen in the future. If that's the, a person's mindset, what is the unconscious mind gonna do with that? It's taking it as a command. So it's almost taking it as a command to, to think of more horrible stuff to have more horrible feelings because the unconscious mind does not understand logic doesn't it doesn't know the difference between real and imagination doesn't know the difference so whether you're lying on the beach or imagining lying on the beach to the unconscious mind it's the same thing so you can feel just as relaxed lying on your bed, imagining being on a beach. That's what's so amazing about the unconscious mind. But it's also listening to you all the time. Listens to what you say to yourself. It's listening to what I'm saying as well. So you're consciously, consciously listening to this, but your unconscious mind is also listening to this. So some of it is always going to get into the unconscious mind. You know, some of it maybe more than other times. But when you actually, I think when you consciously and unconsciously agree, that's when magic happens. So when you consciously think, I quite like the idea of that drip, that drip drip of gratitude. 
I like the idea of the hole in a bucket of stress. So it can never get full. It can't even get half full. But it's there just to catch, just there to catch the stress and it just gets released. Drip, 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 drip. So it doesn't make a mess, doesn't disrupt your day, but it's constantly being released. And you've got that drip, drip, drip of gratitude coming in through little things that you, little things that maybe you're grateful for throughout the day. It might be something as simple as, I'm so glad I got Netflix. Oh, I'm so glad that um, there's that chocolate bar in the fridge. Because I'm going to chomp into that later. I'm so glad it's in there. So glad I got enough milk to make some breakfast. Little bits of gratitude. So it's kind of separate from, you know, from the whole idea is... I'm never going to open the fridge, see some milk in the fridge and start doing a little dance and singing because I've got milk in the fridge. I'm not that grateful, I'll be honest. I'm not that grateful for it. But I am mildly grateful. But lots of mildly gratefuls add up. So if you go onto if you go onto the supermarket website and get a delivery and you go to the discount the discount section and everything's like under a pound or under a dollar. I don't know if they have under a dollar in America in the on the websites. But some things are like forty pence, some things are seventy nine pence. And you think, every, everything's cheap. Everything's cheap, I'll have that, 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 that. All the thinking is just cheap. Little, 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 little. Go to the cart at the end of it to see how much. And it's a huge amount of money. Suddenly I realise I've spent £100. I've not spent it yet. Um, so I go back trying to say, which biscuits can I remove? But it's those little numbers add up to big numbers. I know this is obvious, but even though it's obvious, when you do it, it still could be a surprise. It's like, wow, how on earth did that come to that? I haven't ordered that much. So when you notice something, oh, you know, I feel grateful for that. Just acknowledge it. Drip. There's another little drip going in, maybe to the top of your head going in. And I actually feel it a bit when I talk about this. I feel it in my face, my head, my shoulders, down my back. So a feeling of of like well-being. Yeah, not all gushy, but just... When I say gushy, I mean like over-exaggerated, doing handstands, head turns, um, you know, snowboarding through the bedroom kind of... Yippee! I have a winter coat. Like, yeah, you got a winter coat. And it is good to have a coat in the winter. So, you know, you might be have gloves. Maybe you forgot you got them in your bag and you, you're waiting somewhere and your little hands are getting a little bit cold. You're like, oh, we're getting a bit cold. And you remember you've got your gloves in the bag. Or maybe you were just looking through your bag for the mouse trap. You were at a bus stop, you think, I wonder if I've got my mouse trap with me. And then suddenly, oh, yeah, my gloves are there. So you put your gloves on. And you realise you can have a bit of cheese as well. And you can feel grateful you've got a bit of cheese, because, you know, you was a little bit peckish. And now your, your fingers are nice and warm. And the rest of your hands, if you put them on properly. So... You kind of, this little bit of gratitude there, drip, drip into the top of your head. And then you haven't got to think about it anymore. It's just acknowledging it. 
but it builds up. And I think that's part of the it's part of the whole positivity thing. It's not about being fake. And that's what I used to think it was about, and that used to turn me off. The idea of walking around with a smile when I felt like shit, basically. And I know that I've got a, rec a recording where I say make smile for five minutes in the mirror. That's a separate thing. Um, but I've not, you know, it's... And of course you could say, well, that's fake, but it's funny. And it's an exercise. Doing push-ups is fake. It's not like a natural thing to do, is it? Doing sit-ups should be illegal. I'm definitely... I definitely don't don't uh, think it's right for people to be doing sit-ups. That's why I don't do them. But it's not a natural thing to do, but people do it. So maybe noticing gratitude, things that you're grateful for, is not a natural thing to do. It's definitely not a natural thing for people. It's not natural. It's not for what I've grown up, how I've grown up in this country, born in the 70s, a negative society in some ways not all it's not completely negative I'm not moaning about my country it's, it's a, a lovely place you know we've got so many things to be grateful for in England it's phenomenal really yet yeah. how much of that do I actually get in touch with how much am I actually grateful for I look at my bookcase. I got some amazing books on hypnosis, psychotherapy. Um, it's like, yeah, it's, the way my mind normally goes, I am prone to the negative. I'll be honest. The first thing I think, well, not now, now I'm saying it, but if someone was to come in here and say, "Oh, you've got a good book collection." Because apparently some people don't even read a book once they leave school. But uh, I find a good thing about reading a book, especially in public, is people leave you alone. They don't interrupt you. So that's a good reason to have a book. And so I might say, oh, you've got a nice book collection. And I might say to them, that's great, but can you just uh, fix the boiler, please? That's why you're here. No, I would never say that. Uh, and I said, uh, I would probably say, oh, you should have seen it f five years ago, six years ago. I had thousands of books. Now I've only got, I don't know how many I've got, probably about, th I don't know, I counted them the other day, probably 800, no, one, two. No, it's not, it's not my boring recording, so I won't, I won't count them. But, um, Instead of looking on the positive, like actually, I've I've re replaced a lot of the books that I used to have, and there's some really good books there. Like for me, for kind of what I do, and I, I do need more. Well, I'd like more, just as an educational thing, and also I feel good when I look at them. I do. I get a little buzz, a little. It's not even gratitude, but it probably is mixed gratitude without realising it. What I get is, I, I love books. And I always have since I was tiny. You know, a little, little, little child. I had a first book I read was a Jack and Nori book. And, and I was probably about three, four. That's the first book I remember. But yeah, it's like, am I grateful? It doesn't come naturally if I try and force it. Doesn't doesn't come at all, to be fair. It's almost like, go away, I'm not gonna, I refuse to be fake. However, if I tap into reality, 
is I'm quite lucky to have those books I feel I do feel a bit grateful because before I moved in here I think at one point I had one book left and now I've kind of you know I've, I've got a few and there's still a lot more I've got years years worth of buying books to get the get the, the stuff back to what it was but I'm kind of searching for the gratitude not forcing it but searching for it which means because I'm consciously searching for it my unconscious mind will be searching for it it's a bit like when you try and remember something you're in a conversation with a friend especially before Google existed now you could just Google anything can't we and I've got a friend and we purposely don't Google stuff because we want to try and use our memories it just means we spend like two hours trying to remember the most mundane fact um, so I can't do that too often but occasionally it's I think it's a good practice you know sometimes you'll be trying to remember something a name of somebody a television show that somebody was in just something and it won't come and then you go to bed and maybe you wake up in the morning you remember it or maybe you wake up during the night and you remember it and that's because your unconscious mind is searching for it and I think it's almost sometimes like you know if someone is yelling at you asking for the answer to something maybe not I don't mean necessarily like angrily or violently but just like they're really pressuring you to tell me can you do you know Pat's going to do it too fast it's happened to me a lot I, I move a much slower pace than I think the average person possibly talk slow I walk slow I eat slow everything I do pretty much is slow um, and my brain sort of comes to a kind of comes to a halt because when I've got someone in my ear uh, everything doesn't seem to quite work very well so maybe that's why our memory doesn't always give us what we want because we're pressurising it we kind of come on memory I want to know who that person was that played um, Bobby Ewing's nemesis in Dallas or you know but because we're pressuring ourselves maybe it doesn't come up which could lead to stress and anxiety so perhaps you know I know it's a, a side a side to what I'm talking about but it's, it does fit together with the anxiety and stress that maybe we're putting on ourselves because we're giving ourselves a hard time and why would we do that which brings us to self-acceptance so I do wonder what what expectations do you have of yourself that maybe are not realistic or at least aren't very kind to you putting yourself under pressure unnecessary pressure I mean that could also it could be like the opposite to feeling grateful couldn't it because I personally if someone was in my ear telling me to hurry up I would feel resentful I wouldn't feel grateful to them even if they were doing something for me even if they were saying come on we've got to get to the bank because I'm going to give you some money to help you out and they're saying, come on, run, run. No, I don't run. I, I'm not a runner. I don't even walk quickly. 
It's not because I can't, it's just I don't, it's not really me. I can if I need to. But in that moment, I'm going to feel resentful towards that person, even though they're helping me, because they're putting pressure on me. So maybe our bodies and our minds, our unconscious mind, feels pressure when we put pressure on ourselves, which then raises the stress levels. So even if it's a nice thing, like a celebration, something that's normally enjoyable, to start putting pressure on ourselves, hurry up, hurry up, we've got to do this, got to do that, making it into a big deal, takes possibly the enjoyment out of it. And then we feel resentful that we have to do this thing even though realistically we don't have to do anything. Ah. So going back to the gratitude, and I love that idea, the stress bucket with a hole in it, continuously dripping out to the point where you don't even notice it. You don't notice the stress building, you don't notice it releasing because it never really builds and it releases a small amount that's unnoticeable. It's not leaving a big puddle on the floor. Ah. I suppose that's one of the benefits of walking forward in life, isn't it? You never go back, because you know, you're gonna slip on all that, all that stress and Maybe all that crap that's in that bucket. Maybe we've got lots of different buckets. One's got stress in, one's got anxiety. You could call them the same thing, but there's different levels, isn't there? One's resentment, one's anger, one maybe is hatred, one is regret, maybe another one is self-pity. Um, it could be lots of different things. Memory, horrible memories of things that didn't work out or were just horrible. So you've got all these buckets, holding these buckets full of this stuff. So if you were kind of carry them around with you all the time, I mean, first of all, it's, if you ever carry the bucket, I used to be a cleaner, if you spill stuff on the floor, it often goes in front of you. You know, the, the water overflows in front of your feet and you're likely to get it all over your shoes and possibly slip up and hurt yourself. So if you're walking around with all these buckets, I know you'd need to be an octopus to do it, but you know, just for for the sake of the uh, idea, because it's your imagination, isn't it? So you can have a thousand arms if you want in your imagination. And you're carrying these heavy buckets And you might think, well, I, don't, I can't have a hole in them because then I'm going to slip up and stuff. But you won't because you'll be walking forward. So the buckets will be getting lighter and lighter. And then what you'll have is today's crap in there, today's stress, today's resentment, today's anger and they'll be dripping out as you walk forward in life, moving forward all the time, and it just falls on the floor behind you. But if you were to turn around and walk backwards, you're gonna keep slipping up and treading in that crap, which is highly unpleasant. So you keep walking forward, you've got holes in all those buckets and they're constantly being released onto the floor, but you're walking forward or you're traveling forward. It's left behind. How 
and unless you've got eyes in the back of your head you can't walk backwards not for any sort of amount of distance maybe a few steps but eventually you'll bang into a wall I've tried it well it was a tree for me but you're eventually going to trip up or bang into something to keep moving forward we've got no choice that is how we're built just like we're built to breathe we have to breathe some people think that breathing's a choice try holding your breath then I'm not saying hold your breath I'm just saying anyone that tries to hold their breath will learn that we have to breathe it's an automatic process that we are not responsible for consciously there's no choice the same way we have to move forward that's that's just the way it is we've got no choice and it's annoying it can be annoying sometimes it'd be lovely to go back and fix things wouldn't it it's, you know, every every week those things I'm thinking, oh, I kind of maybe should have done that a little bit different, but you can't. None of us can. In some ways, I feel quite grateful that I don't have to go back and revisit that stuff. There's a lot of things I would not like to relive. And I don't have to because, well, I can't because it's gone. As long as you realise it's gone, it can't be relived. Once you realise the fact that you're moving forward, all the time moving forward, even in this last. 47 minutes of listening to me drone on and on and on you've been moving forward in time we are time machines all of us and we can only go forward in time can't go back and there seem to be people seem to always want to go back with a time machine I want to go forward. I'd like to know what's going to happen in 20 years, 50 years, 100 years. That, that's something you can't read about in a book. You can hit obviously science fiction and stuff like that, but you can read about the past in history books if that's what you want to do, or documentaries, films. I'd like to go forward and in a sense I am we all are we're going forward the whole time in our little time machines which is us, our bodies we're moving forward in time the whole time so any feeling you've got now will change whatever the feeling is it's going to change And that's quite a nice thing. It's annoying if you're, you know, having like the most amazing physical sensation you've ever had in your life. You probably don't want it to ever go away. But it will. It will subside. But then so will the most horrible physical feeling you've ever had. That will also go away and subside. So it kind of works both ways. which is quite good really I don't feel I'd want to be in ecstasy 24 hours a day that doesn't you know I quite like the I quite like reality sometimes sometimes I quite like I think it's okay to feel rubbish sometimes you know it's okay to feel hungry it's okay to need to go to the toilet it's okay to maybe feel lonely sometimes it's okay to have 
an itchy bum or it's okay to want to have a drink of water. It's just okay, it's feelings, isn't it? It's okay, it's just being human, being alive. I mean, from a gratitude point of view, you know, some people say, oh, uh, I've got an itch on my leg, it's so annoying. There are thousands and thousands of people in the world that would love to be able to have an itch in their leg and be able to scratch it and actually feel something. Again, that's going down the road a little bit of, you know, uh, forced gratitude. So I realise that. But it's also real. Yeah, it's a reality. And that sometimes can be a nice a little bit of a kickstart, a little bit of a, oh yeah, but not too much, you know, I don't, I don't think it's healthy for someone to be constantly told that they should feel grateful for what they've got because there's a lot of other people with less, because to be bombarded with that day in and day out is not a nice experience. And it just, it's, in, it's guilt inducing, which is never useful emotionally. So, yeah. So, what can you be grateful for? Not what can you be grateful for? What are you grateful for? What little things are you grateful for? Of course, there might be a big thing. You might be listening to this, and maybe a couple of hours ago, you're little boy or little girl, your niece, nephew, grandchild, might have come up and got all excited, they saw you and gave you a big hug, or maybe drew a picture for you, or gave you a, uh, a, cup, a cupcake that they baked at school that you were really worried about eating, but you know, it was a nice thought, it looked, it's like, oh, I don't know if this is edible, but you felt lovely, because they looked so happy, in that moment, you were grateful for them. You were filled with gratitude, but you just might not have been aware of it. So that goes, that drips into the, well, there's a lot of drips there, isn't there? Of gratitude to go in. So my suggestion is that we're all grateful for things. We've all got gratitude doesn't have to be forced in fact I suggest not to try and do that um, but I also suggest that we've got we have gratitude quite regularly maybe without even knowing you might be eating eating a cake a Chelsea bun or whatever your favourite cake might be, or tea cakes, or you might be having a, a burger, or maybe drinking a milkshake, and you haven't had a milkshake for five years, and it's like, oh, this is nice. I love milkshakes, by the way. Not so crazy about the, uh, the cardboard straws that McDonald's now give to people. Ugh. But yeah, I like the taste. Only, I think I'm going to buy my own little metal straw that I can take with me. I'm not even joking. I think I'm going to do that. But um, there's a gratitude there that's naturally there. But you just might not think of it as gratitude. It might just be a physical pleasure. But you are feeling grateful. Like, oh, your taste, bu your taste buds are grateful for the experience that you are giving them. And if you're hungry, really hungry, your body is grateful for the food that you are given to your body. Or if you go to the toilet, your body is grateful for you getting rid of that stuff out of your body. So it's the little things sometimes that you don't necessarily consciously have to be in touch with the gratitude. But it might be useful to start noticing a few little bits. 
but possibly just knowing just knowing that you are grateful you just maybe didn't realise it and that gratitude drips into your mind and has a positive effect and on the other side the stress, anxiety that bucket now has a hole in it and that's just constantly dripping away and emptying as you walk forward and move forward which is the only direction that any of us can move in our little time machines that we are and that is the end of this recording so I hope some of it made sense <laughs> I'm not sure um, so thank you for listening I'll speak to you again possibly tomorrow and remember to be kind to yourself remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy remember that keep that in your head remind yourself of it you deserve to be happy lots of love bye